And welcome back to another edition of the Good Eye Podcast. My name's Jay Smack, and this is a platform for positivity. Uh, a platform to raise voices up. That's pretty much what it's all about. People doing good stuff in their communities, in their regions, in the world. Uh, we try to lift that up and expose them. And today my guest is Henry Katinda. Henry is uh, the director of a nonprofit in Uganda called Empathy Children Initiative. And he started this himself. It is all about helping the kids in his area, uh, lifting them up, being positive with them, giving them help. Many of these children are victims of conflicts uh, in the area of Uganda and, and surrounding areas, and they don't have a lot of resources when it comes to uh, furthering their education or their careers. So this gives them hope, lifts them up, and helps them out any way possible. Uh, We'll go through all the link information so that you can help them. But here's my conversation with Henry Katinda from Empathy Children Initiative, Uganda, on the Good Eye Podcast. And here we are. I'm Jay Smack on another edition of the Good Eye Podcast. Uh, It's been a while uh, since I've had an episode, a couple months, I believe, but I'm uh, I'm really happy to be be back with a guy who's doing some incredible work, and that is Henry Katinda. And Henry is in Uganda. And Henry, I'm going to let you open things up and describe the work you're doing with children, uh, the children of Africa, as well as your um, your work as a tour guide. But I want to start with uh, with the work you're doing and how I came in contact with you. We have some mutual friends, um, not surprising, in the uh, Synapse Networking Group. That's how I meet a lot of people doing good work. Uh, So first of all, let's hear about the work you're doing with uh, Empathy Children's Initiative in Uganda, and we'll talk a little bit about, you know, what help you're looking for, how people can find out more information. And I'd also like to find out more about you as a tour guide as well. So Henry Contenda, welcome to the Good Eye Podcast. Pleasure being here. My name is Henry Contenda. Uh, They've already described me. I am in Uganda. I was born here. I've grown up here. I've started, I have started here. I trained as a secondary school teacher though I retired after graduation and chose another path in tourism. Uh, I run Empathy Children Initiative in Uganda. This is a nonprofit that helps vulnerable children, children who are like I was just 20 years ago when I was five. I was adopted by another family because my parents could not take care of me. In 2000, I joined another family where I stayed for seven years until my parents could now uh, really take care of me. I joined back my parents in 2007. Yeah, so I I believe I have a date within my heart to help a struggling child out there because had I not been helped, I don't know if I could be where I am now, basing on how I see uh, people I grew up with, like back in my back in my place, many guys of my age are actually nowhere to be seen. They are perhaps in oblivion. They went astray. They are doing drugs. So to be helped from vulnerability gives me a lot of depth within my heart to help someone else out there. So that's where I drive, I drive my passion from, of helping vulnerable children in my community. Uh, the Empathy Children Initiative is online at org, And I'll put links on the website so people uh, can find out about the, the important work you're doing. Um, you said you were... A vulnerable child as well when you were young, but you were trained as a second grade school teacher. Um, when you left that vocation, I know you said this is a calling, but what path, what was your path that led you to found the Empathy Children's Initiative? And when was that? How long ago? 
I, if I say children initiative, I can say I first started as solely, solely in video. Way back, even when I was still at college, I could really collect old clothes from my friends and I could take them back to the village and give to the children out there. So I have been doing charity, let me say, for so long, but not so officially as I do it now. I was doing it on a small scale, just coming in as an individual. So last year, around June, I was advised by the local authorities to register a community-based organization. I followed all the process and I registered it. Uh, in June last year, I was given the documents that certified me as a Empathy Children Initiative, Uganda. This year, we are again elevated. We were incorporated as a fully functional nonprofit in Uganda. And as we go higher, we want to elevate more to register this as an official charity. And that is my dream. So I drive my passion from my own childhood. That's where my passion comes from. I started just like any other random Ugandan out there. Initially, I didn't want to be a teacher. I really wanted to be a lawyer. But because I was given a government scholarship, there is no way I could turn it down and the station home wasn't all that good. I had my sisters at the side who wanted to have to attend school. So I said, since this is what they've given me to study, why not? Let me study. I started, but to be honest, I did not have much interest of becoming a teacher. But I said, let me study because that was the opportunity that was given to me. Yes. So you had the opportunity and you took it. Uh, you say you want you wanted originally to be a lawyer. And that um, brings to mind a number of the children featured on your website can be sponsored directly. Uh, people can sponsor, can choose a child to sponsor um, $60, $70 a month, something in, those, uh, in that range. And many of those children have their dreams listed. You have their name and you, and you have a section where it says, what is, what is it that they dream of being? Many of those children, almost all of them, are choosing very noble professions and professions that can go a long way toward helping their community, such as teacher, doctor, lawyer, nurse, architect, things like that. I'm curious, um, you said you originally wanted to be a lawyer. Are all those children um, actually choosing those professions or do they? do you work with them through counseling to help them understand the opportunities that they might be able to achieve. I'm just curious how so many of those children are choosing those noble professions that can help their community. Well, a child here, many of them are inspired by their elders or some notable people in the community. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in an African setting, not, not that we have every profession here, mm -hmm. there are professions that aren't here. But the most notable ones are lawyer, a doctor, a nurse. Those are the sounding ones. And actually people believe that when you become a doctor, yes, you are the high of it all. So these children, I talk to them and I tell them, I, 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 I ask them, what do you want to be? They'll be like, I want to be a doctor like so and so. Mm -hmm. So they always refer me to people whom they could like to be like them. Others actually tell me they want to be a policeman because there's a certain policeman they like. So many of them are inspired by notable people in the community, all those they've heard about over the news or in conversations. Or they say, when you become a teacher, you are liked by students. So someone picks the passion from there. Yes, so I really talk to them and I ask them, what do you want to be? But many of them want to be doctors. <laughs> I don't know why, but they really want to be doctors. Many, many here because uh, that profession is considered, I don't know, actually it may be even higher than honorable <laughs> profession. It is so higher than that here since we have uh, scarcity of them in my country. Yeah, so they're role models. Just They see uh, people in their community 
and they want to get back to the community like the people that they look up to of course yes um now Areas, certain areas in Africa more than others host a lot of refugee refugees from other parts of Africa. And I know that Uganda, um, Ethiopia, Kenya host a lot of refugees. Do, do some of the children that you bring in to Empathy Children Initiative, uh, are they a product of conf- conflict somewhere else and coming to you? Uh, we have 35 children, mm-hmm. the total. But six of those children, uh, we picked them from, <laughs> let me say, scratch. Uh, four of the six, we did not have any trace of their background. Mm. We just picked them on the street. We, have, we do not know where they came from. We picked them on the street, we followed the procedures, and brought them to stay with us. And they are picking up. Then two, Two, two of the boys, uh, one is from a background of uh, a, an extremely conflicted family, whereby uh, when the father died, he left property with the mother. Now, here we have clans. I, I, I don't know if you can understand the word clan. Yes, here we have clans. So clan members came to the lady and they took almost everything of hers that the husband left for for her because in our setting here actually ladies do not hold power it's just changing slowly but ladies indignantly they do not hold power so they made the lady extremely poor the lady developed mental health issues and she ran mad Mm. so had two boys one of the boys when started drugs and got lost in the world so we picked the young one and he is with us so some of the children are from conflicted background extremely conflicted extremely conflicted so we are they have been a safe haven for them and they are prospering they go to school at least not the schools i would like them to to really attend to but at least i'm glad they are in school Yes. Um, now, obviously, people can go to the website and directly sponsor a child. But in general, if somebody wants to just help your cause and help you with financing, what's the best way to get in touch with you or make a donation if they're not going to directly sponsor a child? We have uh, a GoFundMe on our website, a GoFundMe page. It's on our website. We had a PayPal a PayPal, but uh, PayPal is uh, restricted in our country. It's not here. So I have to travel to Kenya to open up another PayPal. And it's uh, around 400 kilometers from here. It's a bit far. So there is no people in our country. The account we had was restricted because there is no access here. So we just go into Kenya and open up accounts that we can go with. But we have a GoFundMe running on our website so anyone who wishes there can help us not only donations for money clothes are welcome shoes are welcome toys are welcome Mm -hmm. books are welcome anything that can help a child develop anything can add something to a child is extremely welcome but the best way to do that is a financial donation, not actual mm-hmm. donations of objects, or are you saying the actual toys and clothes and things like that? Yeah, the actual toys. You can mail them. We have okay. a mailing address. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, jumping over briefly to your other vocation, which is uh, as a tour guide, and, and correct me um, if I'm wrong here, Henjo African Safaris? Is that correct? Yeah. I'm curious mm-hmm. how you got involved with that. And have you ever mm-hmm. taken any of the children on any of your tours? Mm. All right. Uh, when I was 18, I was in senior four. I don't know how you can term that uh, your area. I, in the vacation of senior four, I started working as a tour guide, as an apprentice. I was learning on job, how to move people around. There is a river here, the, the longest river in the world has 
the source here in Uganda is called River Nile. Mm -hmm. So I was a tour guide at the source of River Nile since I was 18. I used to part-time uh over the weekends when I was out of school. So I got really much love for tourism, actually. I love tourism so, so much. I've moved to very many places in Uganda and Kenya. So Henjo African Safari started around 2019. 2019. Then 2020 COVID hit us, we closed. After the lockdown, we came back. Children here are taken for tours to yeah. nearby uh, uh, areas for tourism. Yeah, and they love touring so much. They love moving, you know, kids. Mm, we, we, we do take them to sanctuaries. Yeah, I've ever taken them to a sanctuary and they've ever seen a few animals. I plan to take them to the zoo, perhaps the end of this year, for them to have that adventure. People around the world um, are very well aware of the beauty of Africa and the incredible wildlife you have there. What are some of the what's some of the wildlife you've seen and that that you feature on the tours uh gorillas gorillas yes gorillas are, uganda has the highest population of them uh they are scarce in the world but they are plenty in uganda here uh they are game dress game dress where you can see the big five the rhino the giraffe the elephants all of them are here african snakes uh, Whoa, and Af Af African Af snakes. I'm not sure. I'm not sure a lot yeah. of people are really into that. <laughs> yeah, so I really like people to come and come to Uganda and Uganda, Kenya, and Rwanda. They can come and explore. They can come for safaris. Yeah, people actually come for safaris, honeymoons, vacations. People like that so much, mainly vacations. Someone spends here like a week, two weeks, then he goes back. At least it's good to change an environment. I know many people are used to life there. Uh, life here, you just hear it around news, maybe documentaries, but there is another set of life here. Perhaps you can come and really see. Um, isn't Sarah Daves coming to see you? Our mutual friend, Sarah Daves, she's coming over there, right? Yes, yeah, Sarah Daves and uh, Mike Campbell, they are coming in January. In January. All right, cool. Um, what are some things that you enjoy doing outside of all the work you're doing with the children and on your tours? What What do you enjoy doing? Some hobbies. I I enjoy reading. Mm -hmm. I'm not uh, so much outdoor person apart from my work. Um, majorly indoor person. I really enjoy reading. I enjoy watching current affairs. I read more about life psychology, politics, and economics. Those are my main four issues. I also watch soccer sometimes. Yes, so I'm not so much outdoor. I no? <laughs> not so much. Um, mm. Do you have a family, Henry? I don't have a family. No? The, <laughs> cho the children are your family? And my sisters, they are over there in the village. Are you there now at um, Empathy Children Initiative? Or is that where you are now, or are you at home? No, I'm, I'm at my home in Kampala, where I do safari work, where the, our offices are located for safari. Okay, because I thought I heard some children in the background. Uh, perhaps we shall arrange another meeting, perhaps next week. Mike Campbell is sending things over here, some planning to go with them in the village to give them to the children. Okay. Oh man. I mean, you're doing, you're doing so much. I'm looking at all the things you sent over. Um, but I really want to hit on how people can help you out. And I'm looking at the GoFundMe page. If people want to go right now and, uh, and help empathy children initiative Uganda, I'll put a link on the website. Um, you mentioned clothes and, and toys. What are th some things that, that you need from an infrastructure standpoint, you know, the facilities, the building, things like that, maybe help expertise. What are what are some things that you also need just to keep the organization running? We are in a plan to build a children's center because currently I'm renting three rooms from my dad where I house the six children. 
So I really uh, plan to build a children's center, like a collective area where they can come and have lunch, maybe have supper, like a center. Since the majority of our children are in guardian homes, they're in guardian homes and we take care of them there. So that is my one of my long-term plans. I was planning to start on it next year of how to build a children's center. Secondly, I plus I also dream of registering this as a charity, a fully certified charity. You know, in Africa we don't register charities. We operate as non-profits. Mm -hmm. I think a few countries are allowed to register charities and given a charity number. So if there is anyone there who could be interested, we register a charity. That is also one of my dreams because I want to serve a wide range of children, not only in Uganda, even outside Uganda. That's my dream. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, I know yours is a relatively young organization and you're still getting up off the ground. What, what are your plans or how do you see taking the children that receive your help and, ha and helping them transition to the next step, whether it's education or employment, how long do you see uh, helping the children along on their path as they grow up? How long? I wish to help children as long as I'm alive. That's the first thing. Mm -hmm. uh, education in Uganda takes 16 years. And does that include years. does that include college? So 12 years mm -hmm. and then college? Yes, we have seven years. We have uh, two years or three of kindergarten, though many children don't go through kindergarten. Then after kindergarten, they go through primary school for seven years. After, after primary school, they transition to secondary school. The first cluster of secondary school is called Olevo, but that's four years, and then high school for two years. So these seven plus six, that is 13, then the three at three or four at college, roughly 16 to 17 years. So, however, there are other options. Some children are not well versed with uh, this usual education of copying notes and exams. They may fail and actually many fail. So there is an option, such children join vocational. Vocational, where they can learn vocational skills like tailoring, carpentry, yeah. So I really uh, feel that if we go on with a child, we reach a certain level and he or she is not at par with this education, such a child can be channeled to vocational school where she can get skills that can help her after that. Then there is a transition uh, like after college, though we have not yet reached there, but after college, that is also hard here. Someone leaves college almost blank, doesn't know what's next. So even those who are going through normal education, I really plan for them to have a second option of a skill, much as one wants to be a teacher, I want her, him or her to have a skill, either tailoring or carpentry or photography, mm -hmm. whatever the so I want our children to have at least two skills each. Yes. That's really smart. And that there's a lot of that going on in the USA as well, um, where we are finding ourselves in great need of craftspeople. You know, like you said, mm -hmm. carpenters and plumbers and and stone workers. I mean, people that build the infrastructure. So not only to offer that as vocation school or help children achieve, you know, that or, or certification, but offering the, the, the second option, you know, the fallback plan, uh, makes a lot of sense. Um, once again, I'm talking to Henry Katinda of empathy children initiative, Uganda. Um, this is a, an everyday, all day, all weekend thing for you. How much sleep do you get Henry? Because you have your tour guide, job and then you also run this nonprofit and you said you want to make this your full-time commitment is that correct uh, 
how, how what's a day like for you what's a typical day like uh both of the things you mentioned are my full-time commitments i commit 100 percent of my time there a day like on weekends i like almost every after two weeks at least i have to check on the kids sometimes after one week or sometimes because of emergencies for the tour company as long as i move with my laptop i can work anywhere i can receive uh i can reserve for hotels i can receive inquiries i can respond to inquiries as long as i have an area where i really had to sleep at least around six hours sometimes four yeah maybe on sunday i at least get some time off for myself good thing i have no family have no wife i have no kids so I get some time to rest on Sunday, but other days I'm extremely engaged. I have to attend some ups meetings. I have to attend to other meetings. So I sleep for roughly four to six hours a day. Mm. Man, good on you. Um, well, Henry, I, I want to open the floor to you. Um, I've been asking all the questions. Is there anything you want to address? with people um and one last question as we lead it lead into this and then you can bring up anything you want do you, are you hearing more and more from people all over the world or is it concentrated in either say the united states and they're locally in uganda or are you getting attention from people all over the world i can say i'm really getting attention from people all over the world i have ever received the donation as far as russia mm -hmm. <laughs> and it was extremely I I really wondered around January. So I welcome all kinds of people. People in Uganda, some of them do help out. People in India, there's a friend in India who really helps out almost every month. So I am getting attention all over the world, I, I can say. Uh, though people in the US have given me a lot of platform, and I'm extremely grateful for that. Uh, through signups, I've met amazing people. And I'm so happy for that. Many have been extremely helpful. You know, also on the issue of GoFundMe, you know, only people from 19 countries are allowed to open up GoFundMe. Mm. None of those countries are African. None of them is Asian. None of them is South American. And none of them is Caribbean. The majority of these countries are in Europe, the US and Canada. So. I approached someone and I told her, could you, madam, help us with the GoFundMe? And she was helpful. She lives in uh, Ohio. She's called Amanda Thomas, and she was extremely helpful. So for that, I'm extremely for people in the U.S. You really showed me a good heart. And actually, two of them are coming over to Uganda in January. Perhaps okay. you two will come, maybe. Oh, uh, good. I, it, it's on my bucket list. I don't know if they have that expression there, but bucket list are things you want to do. Um, things you put in your bucket to do before you die. And I would love to see Africa. I would absolutely love it. I've always been fascinated with the wildlife there and the people and the food. Um, now you say the GoFundMe page is not accessible to everybody, but everybody can get on the website at ECIUG.org and sponsor a child or figure out how they can help some other way. But um, as I mentioned before, is there anything that you'd like to address or bring up or ask of people um, as we start to draw to a close? Uh, I would like to really ask for uh, support from your people who are hearing you or who will see this body has. Like, I really request them to join me for this cause because actually this is a global cause. I would like to expand. We could like to expand to serve a wider range of people. When the community is really thriving, I believe the whole world is going ahead. But, you know, children, when children are not cared for, I believe uh, the future is honestly disbanded because the children are the future. We are not in the world more than the next 100 years. But, have, but perhaps some kids will have their kids in the next 100 years. And it is this here that will shape the next world. Maybe we have shaped ours, but you know, we have Generation Z growing so fast. Yeah, so I really ask for help, any kind of help. Do you have shoes? Do you have 
old clothes in your closet that you, you do not put on. Someone here is craving to have that cloth to put it on. You find a kid with only two clothes, three clothes. The highest is four. Any kind of help is welcome, as long as it is helpful to the kids and to the community. It's extremely welcome. Yes. Uh, to, to, to clarify on the GoFundMe, anyone can donate on the GoFundMe mm -hmm. all over the world, I believe that, but opening it up. Oh, I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, it is, it. so it is accessible to just about everybody. It is accessible when you're donating. I see. But opening it up, it is only re restricted to 19 countries. All over the world. Okay, good. Well, I'll put links once again. E C I U G, that's Empathy Children Initiative Uganda dot org uh, slash sponsor a child if they want to go directly or just go to the website. Well, Henry, I'm really um, glad to have gotten to meet you. Your story is fascinating. The work you're doing is amazing. Um, we all have our causes, and I, I, I kind of say that in that whatever is important to the individual, uh, whether it's cancer or multiple sclerosis or a disease or a cause, you know, that tends to be what they lean into, but everybody can relate to helping children. So thank you for your work. Thanks for making time for this. I know I'll see you again soon, probably at another Synapse meeting. Maybe when you uh, have a hub of your own, you'll be the, the hub leader and the nonprofit all at the same time. But I appreciate your time and uh, I'll let you know when the podcast is published so you can share it and and share some uh, some information because all I'm trying to do here is just provide a platform for people to get the word out. So thank you once again for your work and your time. Welcome. I could say thank you so much for giving us your time and I'm extremely happy for this. I, I also invite your friends to, to Uganda for safari. <laughs> one day yeah they should come and tour around for two days three days or even a week i appreciate that and i'm going to take you up on that a friend of mine just got back from kenya which uh oh yeah i know is right next door to you so uh i'll be down i'll be down there as well at some point uh how why why did he miss out on you guys I, <laughs> I don't know i'll ask him i'm like what were you thinking <laughs> you were right there you should have gone over and seen henry no right. Yeah, uh, when you click on our website for the tour company, it is under maintenance. We are we are rebuilding it again uh, for the tour company. We are building it again. Perhaps I'll share it again with you when it is fully done. Yeah, please do. Yeah, we had we had issues last time. It was hacked into, so we went away with it and wrote a new one. Actually, I'm glad you mentioned that because I did go to the website and saw that it was down. Um, and that is H E N J O African uh, Henjo uh, African Safaris dot com. But people can go to the Facebook page. I did see that, so I'll post that link as well. Yeah, I'll send it to you. Though we're not active on Facebook, maybe on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. I'll share it with you. Okay, that sounds good. All right. Thank you again, Henry. I know it's later for you, so have a, a great evening and a great weekend, and I, I hope to see you soon. Thank you so much for hosting us. I should say, may God bless you. Thank you. Likewise, my man. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Take care, Henry. I'll talk to you soon. Take care, too. I'll be happy to hear from you again. Thanks again to Henry for his commitment, his work, his time, attention, and intention, and thank you for yours for listening to this podcast. Uh, there's plenty of negative going on in the world, and it's all too often amplified to greater volume than the positive going on. So we want to amplify those positive voices here on the Good Eye Podcast. Find out more about Henry and Empathy Children Initiative Uganda at ECIUG.org. GoFundMe at GoFund.me slash FB75D625 or link directly from the Good Eye Podcast website at GoodEyePodcast.com. My name's Jay Smack. If you have any ideas for topics or want to be on the podcast yourself, need your positive voice amplified, hit me up. You can do that through the website as well. Thanks again for your time, attention, and intention, and I'll see you back here 
you soon on another Good Eye Podcast.